Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's down and dirty is I'm trying to record. I'm recording, recording. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's down and dirty is how to use a hydraulic hammer. If you've never used this before, it looks really straightforward, but I assure you there is some technique to this. There is a method to the madness. So the first thing we're gonna cover is the most important thing. Uh, the shank, the actual piece that is coming out of the bottom of that hammer that hammers things is really expensive. You don't want to break that. And how, are, how do you break that? Well, that's really easy. Uh, when you go down and you've got this thing buried in concrete, let's just go ahead and smack ourselves a little hole here. Okay, so we've got that sucker buried, right? What happens if I start to really reef on this thing back or forth towards the machine? Well, we're all familiar that what's going to happen is that thing's going to bend and snap. And you're gonna have a really bad day if you have to call your foreman and tell him that you just snapped the shank on the hammer. Because like I said, those are really freaking expensive. You gotta have a tech come out to replace it. And you've put the hammer down for an indefinite amount of time. So one of the most critical things to think about when you are using a hammer is not bending or flexing that shank. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of an exception to this that I will get to. We will get to it. So what is our technique here? Well, what we're doing today is we're just breaking up this concrete so that Rick can pull it in the CX-80. So I know, just from experience, it comes with time, that I need to do a relatively tight pattern. This is what I started with before Rick started pulling. We didn't really know how much I was gonna, how aggressive I was gonna have to get. We didn't know how much re-rod was in this. So these holes are spaced out a little more than over here where this is what I've been breaking since I know how hard everything is. So we're gonna pop a couple extra holes in here for Rick and help him out. So the first thing that we're gonna do is, when we set up, what I'm looking at is my top cap, which we talked about and discussed in our setup video. So if you haven't seen the setup video on how to actually put a hammer on a machine, go watch that real quick. But the top cap is essentially the very top part that is attached to our pins. That is level for the hammer. And so if we get this thing situated right about there, I'm level. And now I know that I've got full down force from the machine going to that hammer. When you think about using a hammer, you wanna think about it as the same as if you were using a hammer and a chisel. That's essentially what this is, is a giant hammer and chisel. If we really get this super shallow angle, that's, that's gonna cause a problem because what's gonna happen is just like a hammer and chisel, you can see we're scooting across the ground instead of actually chipping away at what we want. You wanna be perpendicular to the surface that you are impacting so that you get the maximum amount of force driving our hammer down into the concrete. So because we are hitting the ground, we're gonna get perpendicular. The other thing I want you to notice is, if I push pressure, when we bottom out, not when I just set it down, but you need to actually Put pressure and bottom it out. What that does is it, it pushes that ram up into the hammer and it sets up so that you can actually smack the shank down into the concrete. If it's up like it was, you can see the hammer trying to engage, but it's not able to. And that's really not good for your hammer. I don't recommend doing that, but obviously this is a down and dirty and I need to demonstrate. So we're gonna shove it down on there and then we're going to engage our hydraulics common rookie mistake and you're gonna see in this machine because it's a little sensitive every once in a while I'll lift myself off the ground don't lift yourself off the ground that is not doing you any favors it's not making you have more down pressure and it's not making you break that much faster it's just putting a lot of stress on the machine and you're gonna see that hammers are very stressful on the machine as is you're already stressing the pins you're already stressing all of the the joints you're putting stress on the cylinders this is already a very very hard attachment on the machine we don't need to make it any worse on the machine so don't lift yourself off the ground just keep good down pressure and you're gonna notice while we're hammering I'm keeping down pressure with my boom 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna engage our hydraulics, just keeping good down pressure. There we go. I, and, and what you're gonna notice too is as soon as we punch through that concrete, all of a sudden my, my shank starts to drop down pretty good. That's how you really know you're through the concrete. So let's do that one more time. Watch that shank as we punch through. So barely moving, barely moving. Right there, did you see how we punched through? And that shank just, now it's really starting to move. I'm totally through that concrete. There is no point in me going any further. You're just stabbing into the subgrade, who cares? You're through the concrete. And then we're gonna pull right back out. Now, I wanna demonstrate something else. And this is gonna be a little lengthy video just because this is a complex attachment. There's a lot going on. So let's say we reach way out here and we're gonna pop ourselves a hole. So we're gonna drive that baby down in there and again, keeping constant down pressure without lifting myself off the ground. What can happen here if you're not keeping, if you're not tracking with the hammer as you go down, is you can kind of wedge yourself in the hole a little bit. And so I intentionally, I'm gonna intentionally wedge myself. And so if I try to pull back right now, see, I can lift myself, if I really want to, I can lift myself off the ground. Everyone's first instinct is just start cranking and trying to get this thing unstuck. That's a great way to break a shank. So what you need to do is look at your alignment. So our shank is for the most part almost perpendicular to the surface, but if you look at the top cap, my top cap is not anywhere close to being perpendicular. So the first thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna curl towards me and I'm gonna stick out. And did you see as immediately, as soon as I relieved that pressure, it started to pull out. Sometimes it's not that obvious and you may need to delicately work your controls back and forth. And this is kind of the range of motion that I am using when I'm trying to work myself free. I'm not going extreme. You're going to feel in the hydraulics. You're going to feel it tighten up when you really start to stress that shank. And you don't want to go beyond that because that's when you're going to snap things. Now there is a way to kind of prevent getting stuck quite as much. And this is what I was saying earlier that we are going to flex just a little bit. So when I start this hole, I'm actually, look at my top cap. I'm actually gonna start with the top cap tilted away from me a little bit. And we're gonna, oh, I didn't get down. We're gonna hammer down to right about there. And now because I don't have a lot of that shank down in there, I'm gonna rotate back towards me to where we're a little more perpendicular. And ideally I'm doing this while I'm hammering. It's a lot harder on it if you're not actively hammering and breaking that concrete up because now we really are flexing the shank versus if we do this while we're hammering, you're actually hammering and breaking the concrete as you adjust. But now I'm gonna hammer with it more in a straight up and down position. What that did is it opened up, it kind of wallowed out the top of the hole so that it's kind of making a cone down to our tip. And so now there's a lot more, you can see the shank physically moving in that hole because there's a lot more room and that will prevent you from getting stuck quite as frequently. You're still gonna get stuck every once in a while, it's not that big of a deal. So again, I'm gonna do this in real, real time here. I'm gonna start with it a little bit away from me, and then once I get right about here, as I'm hammering, I'm gonna rotate it back, and then I'm gonna rotate level. Boom, we're all the way through. Now look, just a gentle lift up. I didn't have to worry about getting stuck, I didn't have to worry about cranking on the machine, I didn't have to worry about breaking my shank. And you can do it the opposite. Start towards us, pop away from us, and then take her on down. There we're punched through. Look at how easy that comes out. It's not hard on the machine at all. Now another thing that can happen, and you're seeing it as I'm doing this, I just haven't talked about it, is you can get to where your hammer isn't quite lined up with your shank. And of course this time it's not there. So even though I'm pushed down, it's still struggling to hit a little bit. And that, again, is just gonna take a little bit of adjustment on your part, just a little back and forth with your bucket angle, maybe boom it, or I'm sorry, stick in or stick out just a hair, and that's gonna recenter that hammer so that you get really good, see right there, it's not hitting hard, so I'm gonna readjust. And so all I did is I sticked in a hair and I, and I uncurled a little bit, and you saw that pin go right up in there, and now we've got full power. So. Hammers are just one of those attachments. It takes a little bit of playing. It takes a little bit of time getting used to things. And then it just becomes not that big of a deal. 
I do want you, and, and you can't really see because I don't have anything showing my tracks, but I am not lifting myself off the ground at all. I am just keeping good, constant down pressure from the machine, and I'm just letting the hammer work. Right there, you can see I changed my alignment to recenter on that pin as I went down. Now, that's the basics of using a hammer. It doesn't matter if you've got a chisel tip like this, or a blunt tip, or a point. The, the basic concepts all apply. The most important thing is do not flex that hammer. Do not use that hammer to really wedge in and try to crank something. It is perfectly acceptable to use this thing and we can bat around some concrete and you can get a little aggressive with it. You can get this big piece out here and you can push it around and that's not gonna hurt anything. But if we had it down in this hole and we decide we're gonna try to shove this huge piece of concrete out, I mean, you can already see I'm, I'm, I'm stressing my point. We can't do that. You're gonna bust something. Don't try to do that. We're gonna work on working that free, but we're gonna do it in a separate video where we talk about getting into some more complex hammer dynamics. So that's all I've got for today's video. That's the basics on running a hammer. Just take your time. Don't do any crazy ranges of motion while you've got that point buried. You wanna keep that point nice and straight up and down in the hole. And if you've gotta work yourself free, just a little stick back and forth, a little, little curl and uncurl of the bucket, and you ought to be able to work that point free. If you really are stuck, that's where you need to possibly get someone who has a little more experience and let them help you get unstuck the first time or two until you really understand how to get yourself unstuck without breaking something. The only last point that I would like to add is every once in a while, when you're really reached out there, you can potentially get yourself wedged to the point that you can't get your breaker totally free. And so we're gonna pretend like right here, we're a little stuck, but not really. Sometimes if you've got a little bit of movement, but it's really wedged in there, push back down on it, hammer a couple more times, and then bring it out. And that's gonna relieve some of that stress instead of you feeling like you've only got the option to come out. You can push it back in sometimes and that will alleviate some of that stress. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. We'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.